Hi there, Tracy and Fitz. I uh, hope you're doing well today. Uh, this is your video lesson. I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, in person next week and hope you have been doing uh, really well. Um, uh, three things I want to talk about. Um, I'll go right down the list. And uh, as usual, if you have any questions or you want me to take a look at any of his pieces that he's playing, um, I just can't, afford, of course, speak to those today because I just, uh, haven't seen what he's been doing the last week and a half. Um, but like, like I said, if you want me to look at anything specific or have a qu question about one of his pieces, feel free to shoot a video over and I'll give you my two cents, okay? All right, so let's go down the list. First thing, pinky push-up number two. I got my hand. Bring uh, that hand up to the fretboard. Going to butt up against the, the bottom of the neck here. Remember, as we go through the D major scale, the hand will kind of do like this, like kind of um, uh, uh, kind of pivot thing right here. Um, this is just for the fourth string, okay? So bring that hand up. I got my ring finger here on the F sharp, right? Uh, and if I were to kind of like, like this right here, my hand's kind of coming in, at, uh, my hand is kind of, against the fretboard kind of at a diagonal right here. So it's not like straight across this way, like that, right? It's more of a diagonal. And my elbow, if I let my elbow relax, my elbow kind of just um, is more towards um, adducted back to my body. So it's not abducted away really far out here. You just let that elbow kind of just hang, right? Don't try to force it out this way. Just let that elbow hang. So you put it up against the fretboard, elbow hangs. The ring finger t uh, is curled and tall, and it will be on the fourth on the fourth fret of the fourth string. Um, my my uh, second finger will be curled. My first finger and second finger will be curled and hovering over top of the fourth string as well. If you notice my first finger here, I think I mentioned mentioned this in the video last week, but it's worth mentioning again is that my first finger does not come straight down on the on the fretboard. Actually, the first finger uh, comes to like maybe the bony side of the index finger on the thumb side. So if I were to push down, you can see how I'm almost like on the side of the first finger if I'm playing this way. And it'll be, the finger will be curled this way, okay? And we'll talk more about it later, but what it'll be, depending on the player, the tip joint will kind of be in line with the nut right there. But I'll take a look at Fitz's hand. Every player is a little bit different uh, depending on their finger shape. So I want to look at his hand first before um, I give you any specific advice on that. Curl fingers. And then what we're going to do um, is hover those fingers over top of the fourth string, except for the ring finger will be down. The pinky is nice and tall. And then go down and then back up just very slowly. Right, just doing that. So that's what I want you to do. Bring that hand up, be it a diagonal, a diagonal line. Whether you can see that or not, <laughs> I'll draw where it was, right along here. Right, going down this way. So it'll be higher up on the index finger, but then lower down here over the, over the joint at the bottom. All right, and next thing I want you to work on number two is a very important right hand pattern. Um, I know we're in Rigadoon right now, um, but he's gonna be doing Brother John and then French Folk Song, and then we're gonna get to the Tonses, um, the Furman Tons and the Bach Tons. Um, and so to set that up now, we're gonna be starting to do, there's gonna be two things we're gonna be doing over the next couple, couple of pieces. One being is getting the thumb developed, the thumb motion developed during Brother John or maybe during French Folk Song. And um, that way it'll be all set up for when we get to a steady hands, uh, when we get to the, the, for our first thumb piece. Um, and then uh, the other thing we have to worry about too is, um, not I even worry, but it's just something that we have to prepare, is the, the, what I call the mammy pattern. This pattern like, is super important. It's so important that we get this right at this stage that we don't have to do anything later when we get to, um, to, uh, to book two, um, where Mammy comes back again, and Mammy evolves into tremolo, which is like the hardest right hand pattern, uh, right hand pattern that I, that I do. So, um, uh, so it's important for us to set this all up correctly now. So what that means is the Mammy pattern, which is stand down so you can see better, is remember the, fing the, the letters of the right hand fingers? P for thumb, I for index, M middle, or medio, indice medio, and I believe it's annular, but don't, my Spanish sucks, my Chinese is better. So um, I don't. I think it's annular, it's just a formal word for the finger. So we have our ring finger A, I, M, and then A. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our thumb on, the, on, that, uh, on that fifth string right there, and we're gonna go M on the second string, on the, on the B string. I've marked them out here too on the, sorry, the camera. I marked them out here too on the handout, um, B, E, B, G. So B, E, B, G, one more time over the dark part of the sound hole. B, second string, E, B, and G. I'm gonna go M, A, M, 
I. That's middle ring, middle index. M A M I, M A M I, and we're gonna start maybe having like arpeggios. Okay, that's what book two is all about. Book two is all about developing a really good free stroke, free stroke arpeggio. Planting the seeds now for that. So he gets used to going M, A, M, I. Be careful you do M that the ring finger does not shoot super far away, like a Jupiter finger. M, A, M, I. M, A, M, I. Right? Practice that a lot. M, A, make sure the finger doesn't shoot away. M, I. You can also think of this too. Touch, play. Touch, play, touch, play, touch, play. One more time. I touch the string, I play the string. I touch the string, I play the string, touch the string, play the string, touch the string, and play the string. Good. So work on the Manny pattern for me. Like I said, it's super important. That's why we're doing it now during um, during Rigadoon. That way we have all of book, the rest of book one to get it ready for the tons. That way when we get the tons, it's all good to go. And then when we get to book two and start doing arpeggios, he's nice and solid and has been practicing that technique. That way when we get to the pieces, they're not insanely difficult. Next thing is number three is uh, buzz tones. Um, just for practice, go through your G, G tonalization. G. Just work on our light touch. That's something we should always be working on. Even if I don't mention working in buzz tones or thud tones, still be still keep working those. There's only so much time in a half hour, right? So buzz, I'll say buzz, so G's open, you can't really buzz that one. And then buzz the A, B, get that buzzy C, and then D, E, you can't buzz that one. Buzz the F sharp, and then buzz the high G. So those are the three things I want you to work on. Like I said, if you'd like me to look at anything since it's been a couple weeks, uh, feel free to, to shoot on over um, a, a video of him playing. I would love to see him maybe doing one of these or uh, one of the pieces he's working on just so I can kind of make sure everything is still looking all good for, uh, for us. So awesome. Have a great rest of your weekend, and I will uh, see you uh, at the same time next time. Take care.